<laughs> All right, good morning. I think the stage is for me right now. It's a very bright light. I cannot really see you. Hopefully, you can see me well. So, hi, I'm Derek. I am uh, currently living in London. I also used to be a release manager, but for PHP 7.4, which is no longer supported, so I had to strike that out on my slide here. Um, part of my day uh, daytime work, I work for the PHP Foundation on the PHP language. So if you have any suggestions to improve the language itself, uh, come find me later. Um, I'm the author of XDBook, which I'll be talking about a little bit today, and how it has improved in the last year or so, and some things that I've been looking at, at making it easier f for using XDBook with Neos, because there are some very specific cases where this is actually quite hard. I like maps, beer, and whiskey. It's irrelevant, but I thought I'd throw it out here. And yeah, let's get going. So you might not be aware, but um, with XDBook 3, which came out about a year and a half ago, um, I actually changed quite a lot of how it worked internally, um, which now makes it a lot easier to turn things on and off. So there's different modes in XDBook. And why this is relevant, I'll, I'll get to in a moment as well, uh, related to Niels as well. But it basically allows you to, to have the debugger loaded without it doing anything, which is really useful in, I wouldn't quite say production environments, but you can have it loaded without it being a burden to running anything. And I found out that having the debugger on while running Neos makes things a bit slower. There's different reasons for that, which I'll also mention in a moment. Uh, but all the different modes then add additional functionality to XDebug. So there's the development that makes, I say, the nice orange Vardams that you probably don't see very often because you have an error handler. Um, but there's the debugger, there's tracing, um, there is a profiler, and code coverage in case you use unit tests. But what I've started prototyping is something called the time traveler mode. Now, lots of people always ask me, well, I'm debugging, but I clicked one too far. Can I go one back? And the answer has always been, no, you can't do that, because PHP, the language, doesn't have a way of going back after it has run something. Um, in some cases, that makes a lot of sense, because if you have added something to a database, how do you unadd it to a database, right? You can do delete, I suppose. But after you've updated the value, how do you unupdate the value? It's so, something's not possible, right? Like unreading from a network that you've written to or to a file. Things that are not possible. So what I've been trying to work on, and this is still very much prototype phase, is something called a time traveler, which is basically a way of how you would be able to run a request. It ends up in a big file. Uh, very big file sometimes, which would then allow you to play it back through the debugger. So after the end of the request is over, you'll be able to play it back and inspect all the variables, but also step back if you have to do that, which I think is a really nice way, especially if you have a, like an application that you give to somebody else to run. They find a bug in it. You say, well, just turn this on, give me the file, and then you'd be able as a developer to debug that. This is a lot of work. Uh, that's why it's not finished yet. All right, lots of other things I changed in XDBook. I Don't worry, I won't go through all the settings, uh, just showing you that there's many of them. But there are a few that are kind of interesting. So the one I like to use for debugging is there's this start with request setting, which by default is set to trigger. And remember that. That basically means that XDBug will only start debugging when there is a hint to XDBug that you would like to start a debugger. I tend to do that by a little browser icon, which I don't have en enabled here, it seems. Where did it go? I tried this out, seriously. Anyway, there used to be a little icon there for me to click to, um, to then start a debugger. I found out that actually, and I will show you later in a moment, that um, when you start Neil's with the build-in developer, uh, the build-in web PHP develop, no, with the built-in PHP web server, it's, gosh, it's early, isn't it? Uh, there are some issues with that, and I'll show you in a moment. What I also worked on really hard is performance. I'm not sure how many of you have been using XDBug since XDBug 2. If you have been using uh, PHP for a long time, you probably have, and you probably also really didn't like that it made things go a lot slower. 
At least I found that too. So after I did the rewrite for Xdebug 3, where I've split up everything in the different modes, I actually very specifically started targeting each of them to see whether I can prove that specific feature. So the yellow line, for example, is by using profiling. So you see that at some point I came up with an ID that made the profiler, was it 30% faster or something, by just doing little things here. And those are the branch names, irrelevant. And similarly, like code coverage is about 20% faster. But this sort of pales in comparison if you compare this to Xdebug 2. So again, the yellow line goes from 270% baseline to about 60. That means that the profiler is about four times as fast, which is great for a profiler because you don't want your profilers, of course, to have any OVAT. Now, this is ongoing work. Um, I know that for code coverage, I would like to improve it because there are some architectural issues with it. But unfortunately, fixing that makes it 50% slower again, which is why I haven't merged this yet. But yes, ongoing work, lots of work to do to make things better. Now, to show you a few things that makes it easier for you to figure out what Xdebug is doing, I have a set of light demos, so please, I'll keep your fingers crossed that I work, to show you um, yeah, how these things are easier. So there's a new function called Xdebug Info. It works like PHP Info. So if I load this, I'll make this a bit bigger. Of course, nothing changes because of reasons. Because there's nothing to change, I suppose. Oh, no, things do change there, see. So I can show you it's not actually made up. What this basically shows you is all the different features that are enabled, which isn't very interesting because you should already know that. But in some cases, there you, there's an environment variable which then overwrites it, so it will tell you. It will also tell you um, whether it could connect to the debugger or not and tell you exactly what it has tried. So this is sort of useful if you run PHP in a different environment than your IDE if it runs in a Docker or basically anywhere else that you can think of. And it will tell you what happened or not. Um, and then below you have all the XDBook relating settings, which isn't very interesting. Now, with XDBook info, you see this here already. There's this whole set of diagnostic messages. So if anything goes wrong, or if you try to do something, or XDBook or your IDE tries to do something that doesn't work, it will tell you an exact message. And there's also a link to the documentation, which I can't really click on now because I'm not on the Wi-Fi. But it has an overview of exactly um, what the error message is about, what the cause likely causes, and also a set of solutions how you can fix that, which I think is very useful. It was f a way for me to make sure that I get fewer emails, which is always good. Now, XDBook Info, yeah, done the demo has a few extra things as well. So let me switch to uh, the code. It's not this one. No, not this one. Where did it go? Sorry, I just had the wrong tab open. Now, I don't know how, who of you uses VS Code or PHP Storm? So can I show, see a show of hands? So VS Code first, sorry, <laughs> I did ask the questions. Okay, a few and the rest PHP Storm, I suppose. Anything else you want to shout out? No? Vim, Vim? okay. There's always one. It includes me, by the way. Uh, okay, fair all, Vim. There's, uh, there's a debugging plugin for Vim as well. I don't really use it because I find it too cumbersome, but it does exist. So I shall be live changing this file. Okay, so a reason why Xdebug Info has this extra argument here is that um, Tools like, P like PHP Unit or other tools that make use of Xdebug data, like for code coverage, need to know whether code coverage is enabled. And because the mode can be set in different ways, either on the command line or with a setting, uh, there needs to be a way for figuring out what it is. So let me save this, and if I then reload my phone, it will just tell you all the modes that are enabled, which is great, right? There's also Oh, I will make that a bit bigger. You can see that. There's also a link here. 
And you can set up Xdebug to make those links go to, uh, to open them in the IDE. So at the moment, I've configured this for PHP Storm. And unfortunately, I just updated PHP Storm to the 2023 release, and they removed this feature. So now you have to install a plugin. So if you're on 2023.1, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll go and fix that at some point. Now, also, there is another issue here. The, f the file name that you see here is as it is running, in my case, in uh, a Docker environment. So if I click on it, nothing would have happened anyway, because what would have happened in your ID, uh, oh, it would have opened this file, because this is var info.php on my local file system. Um, this feature never used uh, the path mappings that are set up, for example. Now, path mappings is something I'll get back to in a moment. So it would open up the wrong file. Similarly, setting a breakpoint here also wouldn't work because it's the wrong file, right? Now, the other thing that is kind of neat, which is new, and it is something that you as a user can use while developing in case you don't want to set a breakpoint, is this xdebug notify option uh, function which you can give an array of information. In this case, I'm just putting it xdebug info variables, but you can, any variable would fit there. And when you debug with that, which I shall demonstrate by clicking listen, this is where the tricky live demo starts, so fingers crossed that it works. I shall then set up a breakpoint and reload the slide. And of course, it didn't work. Why is that? I will cheat. It still does not work. Live demos are fun, aren't they? OK, now, how do we figure this out? We have this xdbook info thing here, right? So let's better make use of it. So if I load that, and now, ah, now it stops in the file, of course, the wrong file, because as I just mentioned to you, the path mappings are wrong, and I hadn't fixed them yet. So let me do that before moving on. Live demos, as I said, always fun. So let me just do that. Now, you have the same issues with PHP Storm. I'm just showing that VS Code, because it makes editing the configuration a bit easier than clicking around in things, and I don't like to click around in things. All right, so let's try that again. Set a breakpoint here. Set a breakpoint there. Reload again. And now nothing is happening here, which makes sense because it's, of course, stuck in the debugger on this first line. So let me step over that. Yeah, that goes here. Then you still don't see the output because PHP uses output buffering. But when I now click step over this one, you see in the debug console a new variable show up which is the, the values of what I passed in. Now, what, does, what it doesn't do yet is that it only does one level deep, which means you don't actually get to see the values yet. But that is something that I'm trying to figure out with the auto of the VS Code plugins to make a way of making that work there, but not there yet. And let me now run to the end. And then, ooh, this got them really big. That's too small. So then here you will see in the overview that the step debugging was actually active, so it knows that that happened. I mean, this is obvious because it stopped at a breakpoint, but uh, there you go. And which features were enabled as well. So that's xdebug info. And xdebug notify. As I said, the slides are mostly for me. The file link one I showed you already as well. Now, sometimes when you do debugging, you set a breakpoint on lines that don't exist. So let me stop PHP, sorry, VS Code, and go to PHP Storm. Uh, and of course, I've now, no, they're all here, sorry. Explorer. So the static parameters on. So I will continue with VS Code here because I've set, I've demoed with that, played with it around this morning. So in this case, what I'm doing here is I'm setting a breakpoint on this line five here. Now, line five doesn't have any lines of code, right? We can see that. So normally, what would happen if you run the debugger, 
you would see that it wouldn't stop on that line because it doesn't exist. So this is the static sorry, variables not PHP properties, properties. properties. Thank you. Properties. I should just have bookmarked those instead. And it does the one, two, three, four. That's because I haven't started the debugger. Nope, this one. There we go. So reload that and was I too late? No, I'm, I didn't click properly. There we go. Reload that and now you see that this is hanging again because it is waiting for the debugger. And it stopped now. Oh, it stopped on line six. But I haven't set a breakpoint there. So Xdebug has a way of figuring out that a breakpoint actually has happened on a different place than where you set it. Now, it does this for lines, and it has done that for quite some time already. And basically, the way how this works is it, um, whenever a new function gets started and a breakpoint is not resolved yet, it will actually look at whether the executable lines in a function match any place where a breakpoint is set. And if a breakpoint isn't set, it does, or if a breakpoint is set on a line that doesn't have code on it, it will scan forwards five lines until it finds a line of code that has something on it. If it doesn't find anything in the next five lines, it also tries the two before. That often doesn't really do much because many people set a breakpoint on the first line in a function, which is kind of a nice thing to have here. Now, I shall press, press play on tape a few times, four times, and then it's over again. So that is kind of a nice way. It does like uh, clever ways of coming up with better places where debug breakpoints actually happen. So how does this work? Well, let's have a look at the log. Uh, so let me open this. This is, of course, way too many lines of code in there. Need to go start to the start, sorry. Uh, too many. There we go. So the Xdebug logs, if you set it up, and if you set it up with, <laughs> if you turn it up to mode 11, you get a lot of output. And its output, for example, here you see that breakpoints are being set with breakpoint set size. It sets it on a few files that we are, where we are in debugging, so that's fine. But it sets here uh, the debugger on static properties on line 5, as we set in the line. But it realizes that there is no line 5 here. It's in the smallest range of 4 to 9, and 4 to 9 is the span of the function. It says that it can't find it in a set of executable lines, and then it realizes, oh, it is set on line 6, so we'll then send a notification to the ID, which, of course, fell off the screen. Notification saying that... Where did it go? Here they go. That it is now a resolved breakpoint, and the ID can then adjust to where the breakpoint used to be set, or is actually being run at. Now, VS Code instantly moves the, the defined breakpoint for you. PHP Storm doesn't do it quite yet, although its new release, 2023.1, 20, 20, does now have functionality for doing it. But it is still a little bit clunky. So I will be talking to them to improve on that a little bit more, too. All right, no, there we are. Now, return values. I always find this when debugging, especially if there's like a fluent interface. You, I saw, like, for example, the new content repository, apparently, there's lots of fluent interfaces, right? You call a function, and then from the return, you can, can then call a different function on. Debugging that has always, has always been really tricky because the debugger would only be able to stop after ex each executable line. And nest or chained function calls make up the same line of code. So there was no way of inspecting the return values of each of those fluid functions before something else is being called on. And that was a really annoying way of, of well, you just couldn't debug it. But often what people would do is they would assign it to a new variable, then look at the variable, and then call function as a new variable, which is, to be fair, a bit pain in the bum. So Xdebug 3.2 has something called return value debugging. 
VS Code and PHP Storm handle this in a slightly different way, but both work. Um, they just decided to take a slightly different approach there. So let me show you that with VS Code here, if I open up the right one. So I will open up the Fluent Interface file. And this is quite a contrived example quite a contrived example. Basically, what I have is I have a, a silly shipping info class where I call set, set us on. I mean, nobody would do this anymore now because we have all the read-only properties and stuff like that. And I mean, this is not how I would write code, let me put it that way. But each of these methods has a return. Now. And then there's a two-string method that also returns something. And there's a count letters one, which well, you can see what it does. It counts the letters in the shipping information. And the way how you call this is by running this fluidic interface. So let me set a breakpoint here. It is unverified. To be honest, I don't know what that means. So let me set it there, though. And then I call the fluent interface API. No, this file. Fluent. fluent. Of course, nothing happens here, because it's hang up in the debugger again. But it stopped at my breakpoints. Now, let me go step over the lines in here, and I'll just go to the next, um, what did this go? Next one here. Problems, call stack, OK. Step over each of those lines here. And when I hit the return, it's hard to see because the screen state is so small. You actually get, there's an extra stage in between returning and the assignment of the variable. Now, in some cases, if you don't assign it to a variable, you just get the interstage of the return value here. So this is an extra step, which basically happens at the exact moment a function is returned. Unfortunately, at this moment in PHP, the original variables in a function that basically has just run disappears. So in this interstage, you can unfortunately only see the return value. And the return value in this case is the shipping info. Um, which, of course, at the first line, we only have Derek Vatten set. So that's how VS Code does that. I think it's OK, but it isn't as nice. So I'll make sure to stop debugging. And then let's do this in PHP Storm as well. So open this file. Set a breakpoint in the same location. Start the debugger. And then. Oh, it's crashed. That makes sense because we aborted the request, right? Same thing here. It now stopped on this first line. And then we, when we step in, OK, the first time we do the constructor, the shipping info is basically just n, 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 right? PHP Storm will actually call the two string method for you, which is kind of handy. When we call set customer, you can see that this, of course, sets the property. And then we call return. So instead of showing it here, just the return value, PHP Storm actually conflates the last state of debugging at the end of the function with the return value, and then renders it in a specific way in blue. I don't know. But in any case, you can then inspect what the, what the properties of this return value are. And it is also possible to dig into that into multiple levels. What it doesn't do, it is doesn't expose this underscore, underscore, return, underscore, value, fake property that VS Code shows you. But the idea is the same. I found this very useful for this kind of fluidic interfaces. And it, of course, works for the others. So I'll step a bit further. Um, it doesn't only work with user-defined functions, but it also works with functions in PHP's internals. So if I now press next or step into, okay, it still needs to run it first to string. So you get a return of to string, which is the string. And then we, you call strln. Of course, you can't jump into the internal strln function because that's C code and Xdebug can't debug C code for you. And I was going to say yet, but that's just never going to happen. It will also then show you the result of this as 47, which is kind of nice. I thought I would show you the return value of strlang as well, but maybe PHP Storm hides that from you. Hmm, something to figure out later. 
Uh, and then, of course, we get letters, and then it's the end of the function. And then you get the result, which is useless. Demo, done. So this breakpoint resolving to get back to, right? IDEs can set breakpoints on non-existing files. Now, if I go back to info here, it all works just fine, OK? Because I've set this up to run in VS Code. And for this trick, I'm going to have to turn off the path mapping. So bear with me for a second. Now, just like um, PHP Storm, what the ID does, it has a whole list of breakpoints. OK, a bit bigger, maybe? How do I make oh, it? It fell off the screen. You have this whole list of breakpoints that it's trying to send at every request. Now, if I don't have the path mappings and I try to send these breakpoints, clearly there aren't files that it doesn't know where they exist, right? So let me start listening. We request this page. And fingers crossed. It actually stops because, of course, I had a breakpoint on this line. But all the other files that it could have set a breakpoint on, it will actually tell you. So if you don't have the path mapping set up correctly, it will tell you that the ID Try to set a line, a breakpoint on a line that doesn't exist, because HTML fluent doesn't actually exist on the file system. And Xdebug tells you, which is kind of handy. And of course, the documentation will tell you why not. Also a handy feature. But sometimes um, you set a breakpoint on a line of code that doesn't get executed. Uh, uh, which is where I tie these things back in with Niels. Now, I know there is a flow run server command. This is actually what it runs under the hood. And I had to modify this slightly. I'll make this bigger, people taking photo. That works for me. This is what it runs under the hood. But I've made some modifications here. Can you see which ones they are? Probably not. It took me some time to figure out what the issues here as well. First of all, I've set up the log, uh, which was handy for me debugging things going wrong. But I've also re removed the uh, xdebug underscore config line in it uh, because that interfered with the setting the trigger. Because whenever xdebug underscore config is set on the command line, it means that that always triggers. So my little icon in a browser never did anything because it, it always got triggered. We might have to have a look at that, looking at maintainers here. Yeah. Secondly, um, for me, it allowed me to set up different modes. So you can set xdbux modes on the command line by doing this. But when you set that before running flow run server, it doesn't pick up those environment variables. So. That's why I had set us up here on the command line. So let me, now, let me now run this. Now comes the big problem whether my demo works or not. And I will go to Neos. OK, this is the demo website, right? Let me first refresh this and see whether it actually runs. It always wants me to log in. My password is not password. OK, no, that's my username. Um, this takes a while, right? It takes a while because uh, the PHP's built-in web server is not multi-threaded. Or so you think. It actually is. But nobody knows about it because it's not documented. So you can actually set it up in such a way that it is multi-threaded, and that then makes Niels go loads faster if you're debugging it. So we have to talk about that as well at some point. Let me stop the debugger in every location. I don't need it right now. So here we have Niels running. I've set a breakpoint on my context line, right? Make sure I start the debugger as well. No, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Click the wrong button. I want to do start listening for debug connection. And when I now click on the link, which what is what you would expect to happen? It stops in the debugger. Considering we have this orange line going on and on, that, that often indicates that there is something waiting, 
And indeed, it has stopped on this line in the code, which is great, because that's what debuggers are supposed to do, and you can inspect the environment variables and things like that. Now, of course, if you're developing things, you sometimes might want to debug things in, in classes that you write. So you go to the node class that you write, and let's say, let's set a breakpoint on no data is removed. And when we then click continue, what will happen? Anyone wants to guess? Nobody wants to guess what happens? So Robert here says nothing will happen and it won't stop. So let me set a breakpoint, done. Click next, and it stops. <gasps> so there's this new feature in, in PHP Storm um, that does the breakpoint resolving will actually tell you now correctly that it has moved to this location. It's not just a feature of, XD, uh, of PHP Storm, it's also something I added to Xdebug as an enormous hack in the last week. So what I've done is I have, I will go to Vim right now, because it makes it easier, too many things here. Um, okay, of course I should have opened the right location. Here. Give me one second. Uh, XT, no. Demo, demos. Um, it's too must have closed the terminal window. And because I don't know where things are, where is the bits of code that... Uh, okay, I have it actually open, of course, because it just had a breakpoint in it, which is handy. Um, what I've actually done there is I've added a sneaky line to it that I've hidden when first debugging this, because I'm sneaky like that. And what it actually does, it sets up a source map. So there's this file here which is not in a standard location. As I said, this is a bit of a hack. Um, let me open that. What's well, in this file? Uh, syntax off, why not? <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> syntax highlighting, it was the spell checker. <laughs> So what is actually what I've done here is I've set like a source prefix, which is where you have your your compiled classes set into, and the one in packages. I just picked a prefix to make all the other lines uh, as short as possible, and it basically makes this path mapping between the files that um, that have the actual code, and then on the other side it has the file that has the original. Sorry, excuse me, original code in there. This is actually the wrong way around. As I said, this is a big hack. Uh, and what I've done is in the pre-compiler for the classes, I've actually added four lines of really hacky code that basically writes the old file and the new file to a file for me then to use. In a format that doesn't look like this at all anymore, but I needed to just get a big list out of it. So the intention here is that we make this work properly uh, with PHP Storm as well so that it moves the lines uh, fully to where it found the breakpoint here, because it hasn't moved the breakpoint. I don't know why it has done that. Um, to actually then do this correctly, or not do this in PHP Store, but just pretend that you're debugging the original class, and both things are options. I just need to figure out what is a good way of doing this kind of things. Now, this isn't only useful for, for NEOS. It's also useful, you remember that I had this file line link that you could click on, and it was in the wrong location because this is running on Docker. Because PHP Storm no longer supports this or has the path mappings for there either, it would also be allowed to use it on something like that. Or if you have a template engine, your template engine or your template is usually written in not PHP, but are compiled to PHP, um, allow you to step through your templates as if you were debugging the templates line by line, whereas under the back, under the hood, it would run the compiled template. Now, un unfortunately or fortunately, I didn't know actually that PHP Storm actually supported that already, but I don't know how it does that, and I'm pretty sure we can improve on that as well. So yeah, that's sort of what I've been working on in the last week as a quick hack. Uh, this is a lot of work to do a lot of work to get right, not only for NEOS, but for other platforms as well, because uh, we want to make sure that this gets mentioned in the logs. If you get a stack trace, 
you want to know where the original files are as well, for example. And in some situations, I know Neos doesn't do that, but other compiled template or compiled file things, they also change the line numbers in there. So there needs to be a mapping between the line numbers as well, which I haven't done at the moment yet. Uh, I know Niels doesn't do that because it makes stack traces ridiculously hard to read if the line numbers also don't work, right? So that's deliberate, which is a good thing, but it would be important to have support for that at some point. And that basically means every time where, Peach, where Xdebug sees a file, it needs to then change that. Now, let me end the demo here and go through my last few slides. No. Okay, this is, just, this is just going to sit here until it times out at some point, I'm sure. And then there's a few things that are actually useful. And I ran into really, uh, like this yesterday afternoon, I saw um, the uh, developer of DDEV. Sometimes people struggle with setting up WSL2 and using DDEV for that. Um, it is kind of useless or complicated to use because the way how WS2 sets up networking is not through um, the default gateway, which is how Docker does it on Mac and Windows and Linux. But the IP address that you can connect to is the IP address of the name server in your Linux running in WS2. What you can do to figure out what it is, is you can use read this information from Etsy Resolve if you have to do that, which is a bit of a pain to do. So XDBug32 now has a specific client host that you can so set up which is XDBug name server, which does all the trickery for you so that you don't have to do that anymore. Similarly, if you're just running Docker, you can set the host to gateway, which is basically something that works where you could have you use host.docker.internal, but it also works on Linux without you having to make this extra mapping in your Docker file to set a default gateway kind of thing. There are smart host names. They're not that smart. Uh, I also have to say that if you run Alpine Linux in containers, this doesn't work because Alpine Linux pretends to implement a C library, but it lies about it. So this functionality is not available there. Xdebug info will tell you that though. Right, in some cases, um, it is really difficult. Oh, need to start a video. Uh, it's really hard to get debugging going, right? In most situations, we have PHP and Xdebug talking to PHP Storm or VS Code. It is just a single network connection and run on the same machine. Or sometimes they run on different machines, which is fine as well, as long as they can connect to each other directly. But when you get things like Vagrant or Docker or WS2, there's this extra layer that makes it really hard to connect directly from the container to PHP Storm, and especially if there's a firewall in the way. Uh, hopefully, your ball isn't actually on fire. But uh, it, it breaks the connection that Xdebux has to make to PHP Storm. So I have, it says coming soon, it's been running for two years, but um, I have developed this cloud service called Xdebug Cloud, which basically goes around all of these networking solutions um, so that you be able to debug your applications running in a different network with complicated firewall setups without any hassle whatsoever. Uh, so I'm quite happy that this exists because it's made my life uh, quite a bit easier. Now, Xdebug is a hobby project. So I like support from you all, if, and I know many of you already do. Um, and I have open support through uh, Patreon and GitHub sponsors. GitHub sponsors, I don't know what's going on there, but I've heard, I've seen for myself and for many other maintainers that it has dropped significantly the last two months. It apparently has something to do with uh, PayPal not being supported. I'm not sure what the logic there was, but we've seen this everywhere, which is kind of sad. Which gets now to the point where sort of it is much harder for open source maintainers to, to have any sort of sponsorship, right? And as I said, I'm, it's nothing to do that specifically with Neos. In developing this path mapping thing costs me a lot of time. And I also have a day job, right? So I don't have the time to dedicate to it. So what I've had for a long time is I have like business support and some companies you might recognize from here, like uh, Tideways or private packages, uh, have helped uh, with business support to keep Xdebug going. Um, and I see that this is not only something that Xdebug does, it's what many other 
uh, PHP-related open source projects are leaning towards is like open source is becoming unsustainable, right? Because lots of people start using open source but don't really contribute. I think somebody else mentioned that last night in, in the awards as well. I can't remember his name. I'm sorry if that was you. So having businesses that make money out of open source should also contribute in such a way because tools like Neos, like Xdebug, like PHP Stan, like packages, they save you all so much time, right? Um, and it's basically run in a hobby project. And if I have to choose between working on Xdebug or, well, luckily in my case, working on PHP, which is my day job, uh, makes it easy, which means development stalls. Now, with that, I will also say that it is important to show you that you're actually doing something. Now, I, sorry, I, this is an old screenshot. This is from 2020. But what I also do is every month I'll c come up with a little report saying what I've worked on. Uh, to be fair, the comments are a bit better than fix this bug, but in this case, not overly. But I will actually show you what I've worked on, and if you're a sponsor, you also get a report sent to you through GitHub sponsors, and some of you probably have been receiving these. So I just wanted to talk about sustainability of open source software because this is not just an XDBug thing. You see that everywhere happening. All right. That's what I had to talk about so far. If you have any further questions, ask them in the app. You can, if we don't have time to answer them here, come and find me later. I will also have a bunch of XDBug stickers that I have way too many of and I need to get rid of. So if you want them, come and find them. If you have later any further questions, you can contact me by email on Derek at xdbook.org, or you can find me on uh, Mastodon at, at DerekR at php.social. And I think it is now time for some questions. Thank you. Um, in fact, we are running a bit out of time. We are running out of time. <laughs> but uh, we will uh, send you the questions, mm -hmm. which we have in the app, and we'll um, probably publish them on Neoscon IO together with your video okay. of the talk. We will do that for probably all of the talks. So if you are a speaker, be prepared to get all the questions we already asked you. <laughs> that, that's OK <laughs> with me. But in any case, also please come and find me if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for new features. And do not forget to rate yes. Derek's talk in the app so that we can award the best speaker in the afternoon. Next up, after a short break, on the studio stage, Christian, Robert, and Carsten will tell us a little bit about their <coughs> NEOS experiences. And here on the center stage, Daniel Lienert will talk about building a blazing fast gRPC service with PHP. So we will welcome you back at 11. Thank you. Um,